Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. Recently, I did a short on YouTube showing what was inside one of my theme bins, and that created a lot of questions about how do we use theme bins? And if you've been following me on Instagram, this past year, 2022, 2023, every time I set up a new theme, I would share a video showing how I set everything up. And again, people saw me roll the card in, they saw me open up my theme bin, and they're like, what's going on with that theme bin? Now, I've addressed my theme bin before, but I thought it's been a while, so I'll do it again. So for each one of our themes, we have a bin, and it has a lot of what we'll need for that bin. And we started this, oh my goodness, it was probably like a decade ago, because all of our teachers in our preschool share these bins. And before that, we were running around, trying to find everything in our storage room for each theme, and that took a lot of time, and we'd always forget things. And then when we'd have to put everything away, that took a lot of time, so finally, we decided why not set up a bin for each of our themes. And then we have them labeled on the front and they are organized chronologically so that we kind of have a good idea of where it's going, where it is on the shelf when we go to get it. So I thought I would just show you an example, just like I did in the short of what we have in a theme bin. This is our apple bin. So what I have in here is we keep all of our props. Again, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love to use props during circle time, and I take time to laminate them and have them nice and sturdy so that I can use them year after year, and the other teachers can use them as well. So those go back here in here so I don't have to search for them. And then things like specialized pocket charts, like this apple, I wouldn't use this any other time of the year, I'd only use this for my apple theme, so that goes in there. We have cookie cutters, and we have felt shapes for our flannel board, and I might put some pom-poms in here, the colors that we'll need, because I love using pom-poms for a lot of things. Stamps for the writing table, or Play-Doh, or even in the art table, this has an apple on it and anything like this apple puzzle and our attribute apples and our some more little apples we use for counting sensory materials die cuts we have uh, la lacing apples more sensory so anything, again, anything that we'll think, use for any of our centers, they're all in here. We've got our big thing of apples here. And these sweet little quilts. My mom used to be a quilter, and so I inherited some of her quilts, and this is, these are cute apple-themed quilts that I put in our dramatic play area or in our book area during this time. And then also, any of our printables, I have a plastic pouch, and then I keep all the originals in here. So this goes in the theme box too, because that way when we pull it out and I'm ready to make copies of things, it's all right here. That goes in there. Our books are actually stored in their own section. So we have a section in our storage room that is by subject where we keep our books. So we do not keep those in our bins. So on Thursdays, because that's our last day of the week, when it's time to change a theme, after the children are gone, I pack up everything from the, that theme, so all the Apple themes items would go back in their bin, I would take this downstairs, and downstairs is where we have all of our theme bins chronologically. So I will put everything back on the shelf, and then I will bring up the next theme. So after apples, for example, would be pumpkins. So the apple bin is put away downstairs, and now it's time to unpack my pumpkin bin. So just the same thing again. I pull everything out, and I start setting up. So it's important that I have the first theme all packed up first, and then I take everything out of the new themes bin 
and start setting up. Now, one another thing to know is that I don't always use everything that's in the bin because since we share these with all the teachers in our preschool, some of these things might not be for my class, but might be more geared for like, let's say pre-K, or I just, I change my mind from year to year. So I don't necessarily use everything in here. So I go through and I get an idea of what I want and then I set it up. And then again, I go downstairs, I grab our books, I change our books on the bookshelf, remove the Apple books and put the pumpkin books up. So it's really a really good routine since we have these bins because again, I know where everything is. I don't have to go searching because as we know, often when we're going to search for things, we can't find them. So having a, the a bin where everything's in it has made it so much easier. So let me just quickly take you downstairs so that you can see what our storage room looks like. Our classroom is upstairs, our storage room is downstairs. So I use a cart to transport everything in the elevator. So when I go to get a theme bin, I just take it off the shelf. And when we're finished with the theme bin, it goes back on the shelf. And this makes it easy so that all the teachers in our preschool can use them as well. They have everything they need, I have everything I need. And then we also have in our storage room areas where we have different, uh, we have it by skill, so we'll have fine motor, colors, shapes, alphabet, fine motor, all of that is on a shelf. We have an area for dramatic play. And again, like I said, we have all of our books by subject. We have a sensory bin area where we keep all of our sensory bin fillers. And then we have areas for puzzles and art supplies and paper. So when we go to set up a theme, we, I just put everything I need on the cart, bring it up, and when I finish, bring it back down. So that's how I use theme bins to set up my themes in my classroom. If you're not already, please make sure to be following Teaching Two and Three Year Olds on Instagram because that is where I like to show the videos of how I'm setting up my classroom. And also make sure to check out my stories because once school starts, I have a little introduction on most days where I kind of show you how my classroom is set up and some of the activities we will be using. And make sure to subscribe to Teaching Two and Three Year Olds here on YouTube and click that bell icon so that every time I publish a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching.